Solve for x such that x plus 7, all to the power of 7, equals x to the power of 7 plus 7 to the power of 7. Hmm. What shall we do firstly? Of course, the only way is to expand the left hand side. Why? Because you find out that x to the power of 7 and 7 to the power of 7 are the first term and the last term of the expansion of our left hand side. By the binomial formula, we can write the left hand side as x to the power of 7 plus the sum of 7 choose r times 7 to the power of r x to the power of 7 minus r and then plus 7 to the power of 7. Notice that r is from 1 to 6. So this is actually our left hand side and our right hand side is of course a section of our left hand side. You can find out x to the power of 7, x to the power of 7 cancel out. 7 to the power of 7, 7 to the power of 7 cancel out. So what we have is this one equals 0. So we just solve for this equation. This guy equals 0. Of course, it's very complicated. So what we have is just this guy equals 0. Maybe it looks so complicated. However, I have a trick. Now, have a look at this term. I'm very lazy, I don't want to write this term again, and I just rename it as, for example, s. So this one is s. And now we have to solve for the equation s equals 0. And s is just a term about x with huge coefficients. Usually, what shall we do for dealing with those equations? Of course. Does it work well? We don't know. Let's have a try. We know that this guy actually contains six terms. Do these six terms have a common divisor? Because r is from 1 to 6. So they have a common divisor, and that is x. So we can actually take out an x. So s is just equal to x times this guy. Nothing will change, but the exponent of x is going to be 6 minus r. Do these terms have another common divisor? Now, let's have a look. Pay attention. r is from 1 to 6. So actually, for r greater than or equal to 2, these terms have 7 squared as a common divisor. So that means 7 squared can actually divide each of them. Why? Because 7 squared divides 7 to the power of r. And what about for r equals 1? For r equals 1, in this case, 7 choose 1 times 7 is actually 7 squared. So you can see that 7 squared also divides the case if r equals 1. So in general, 7 squared is actually a common divisor of all these terms. So in general, 7 squared is a common divisor of each of the six terms. So we can actually take out a 49. Now I'm going to write, now I'm going to write all the terms. After taking out 49 times x, we have x to the power 5 plus 7 choose 2 
times x to the power 4, then plus 7 to the 3 times 7 times x to the power 3 plus 7 to the 4 times 7 squared times x squared then plus 7 over 5 times 7 cubed times x. At last, we have 7 over 6 then times 7 to the power of 4. So if we write them down, it's going to look like this. Now, please don't worry. Do not calculate all these binomial coefficients. How you actually should do is like me. It's 7 times 6 over 2 times 1. It is actually 21. And I write it as 7 times 3. Because I want to write all the coefficients in the form of a product of a power of 7 and another integer. This one, it is 7 squared times 5. 7 choose 4 times 7 squared. It is 7 cubed times 5. Notice that 7 choose 4 equals 7 choose 3. And 7 choose 5 is also equal to 7 choose 2. Because n choose m is just equal to n choose n minus m. Seven choose five times seven cubed. It's seven to the power of four times three. And at last, this one is seven to the power of five. Let's go back to our original equation. If I ask you, what are the answers? Of course, you will tell me x equals zero. There is actually another solution, and it is x equals negative seven. Because then the both sides will be zero and the equation will hold. So x equals negative 7 is also a solution. So what does it mean? S must contain the divisor x plus 7. So it has to have the divisor x plus 7. It also has to have the divisor x. So it is x plus 7 times x then times something else. Now you can see, we already have an x here. So, and where is our x plus 7? Of course, it is hidden in this polynomial. So, what we're going to do is to do a long division of polynomials and have a look at the other divisor about this polynomial. Our polynomial is this one. And now our divisor is actually x plus 7. So it's going to be very exciting. How shall we reach x to the power 5? Of course, by multiplying this x plus 7 by x to the power of 4. It's going to be x to the power 5 plus 7 times x to the power 4. Here we have 7 times 2 times x to the power 4 left. And write down this one, 7 squared times 5x cubed. How shall I read 7 times 2 times x to the power 4? By multiplying x plus 7 by... 7 times 2 times x to the power of 3, of course. So now, what we have is 7 times 2 times x to the power of 4 is the same one. Plus, now, we're going to have 7 squared times 2 times x to the power of 3. Now, we're very unhappy because there is 7 squared times 3 times x cubed left. Now, write this down. 
7 cubed times 5 times x squared. We use the same method. Here we have, we should have 7 squared times 3 times x squared. And now, of course, we have this one. Then plus 7 times 7 squared times 3x squared. It is 7 cubed times 3x squared. Here we have 7 cubed times 2x squared left. And now, write this down. Now we do the same thing. Multiply x plus 7 by 7 cubed times 2x. So we have here 7 to the power 4 times 2x. We have 7 to the power 4 times x left, and we write 7 to the power 5 here. And now you can find out if we multiply x plus 7 by simply by 7 to the power 4, then it's going to be 7 to the power 4 times x plus 7 to the power 5. And you will find out that the remainder is 0. So we stop until the remainder is 0. And our quotient is just this complicated polynomial. So let's write it down. I claim that it's a perfect square. It's a square term. Don't worry, I'm going to show you x to the power 4 is x squared, then squared. 7 to the power 4 is 7 squared, then squared. 7 times 2 times x cubed is 2 times x squared times 7x. 7 cubed times 2x is 2 times 7 squared times 7x. And on this one, This 3 can be actually written as 2 plus 1. So it is actually 7x squared, then plus 2 times 7 squared times x squared. If x squared is a, 7x is b, 7 squared is c. Then this one is a squared, this is 2ab, this is b squared, this is 2ac, this is 2bc, and this is c squared. It is a perfect a plus b plus c squared. And now, this one should be equal to 0, because it's just our s. s equals 0 is our equation. So I have to solve for x such that this one is equal to 0. Because 49 is just a constant and it's non-zero, so we can just cancel it. Here we actually get two cases, no, three. Firstly, x equals zero, of course. Secondly, x plus seven equals zero, and we get x equals negative seven. Zero, negative seven are both solutions. In our third case, it is a little bit complicated. We we'll have to have a look at this quadratic equation x squared plus 7x plus 49 equals 0. Firstly, let's check its delta. b squared minus 4ac. 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times 49. Because 7 is it's just 49 minus 4 times 49 which is clearly less than zero. So what does it mean? It means that it doesn't have any real solution. So we only have two real solutions and two other imaginary solutions. I can only tell you the two real solutions, they're zero and negative seven. So to you get them? Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to me for more wonderful questions, and we'll see you next time, bye bye.